Hi, welcome to the Agora Cafe. Uh, if you're new to my channel, I'm Roderick Long. I teach philosophy at Auburn University in Alabama. And uh, I'm also, uh, I also head up the Molinari Institute, which is a small anarchist think tank. And I'm also senior fellow at the Center for a Stateless Society, which exists in the kind of quantum superposition with the Molinari Institute, neither the same nor distinct. Um, uh, but for, for present purposes, what's most relevant is that I am a displaced San Diegan, uh, although I currently live 2,000 miles away from San Diego. Uh, I still uh, uh, think of it uh, as, as home probably more than anywhere else that I've lived. And this is virtual San Diego uh, behind me. This is uh, uh, a photo I took um, from uh, Cabrillo National Monument um, uh, when I was there. Um, not the most recent time I was there, but you know, a while back. Anyway, um, you know, so given my uh, San Diego nostalgia, I you know, often watch travel videos uh, from San Diego, but uh, I often find them somewhat frustrating because you know, they all seem to be about beaches and restaurants and parks. And while I have nothing against beaches or restaurants or parks, there aren't really any about bookstores and you wouldn't get the impression that you might get the impression that San Diego doesn't really have bookstores. Uh, but in fact, it has a quite, uh, quite interesting uh, indie bookstore scene. And of course, you know, for me, one of the most interesting things about any city is, all right, so what, what, where are the bookstores and what kind of bookstores do they have? Um, and so on. Uh, so uh, I thought it'd be nice if, if someone did a, um, you know, did a video series on uh, the, the independent bookstores of San Diego. Um, and I thought, well, why not me? Of course, I'm not there. Uh, and given that this is being uh, filmed during the pandemic, even if I were there, that there'd be some, you know, there, there would be, um, you know, I, would, I wouldn't be able to go into all, you know, some of the bookstores are open and some of the bookstores aren't, wouldn't be able to go into all of them. But I can interview, um, you know, I can interview people from, the bookstores uh, via Zoom and put them on my channel. And so I thought that would be fun to do. Uh, so I, you know, so that's what I'm, I'm doing here. I'm starting a series of, uh, of uh, interviews with representatives from various bookstores around the San Diego area. Uh, and uh, the first one is uh, with Mysterious Galaxy, uh, which is a uh, science fiction and fantasy and mystery and some other genres um, uh, bookstore. Uh, and um, here we go. And I'm pleased to have uh, uh, with us uh, Matthew Berger, who's one of the uh, co-owners, uh, uh, new co-owner of uh, uh, Mysterious Galaxy Bookstore which is at its current uh, address is 3555 Rosecrans Street, number 107 in San Diego. Uh, the website is Mist Galaxy, that's M-Y-S-T, mistgalaxy.com. Uh, and there's information there both about ordering books and about book events and podcasts and, and various things. And um, I was in your bookstore a couple of years ago, although it wasn't, I gather, years then, and also it was in a different location. Um, but anyway, can you tell you know, tell us a little bit about about the bookstore and also about how you got involved with it and the history of it and so on. Sure. Um, so Mysterious Galaxy is a genre bookstore specializing in sci-fi, fantasy, horror, YA, um, romance. And it's been around for 27 years. Um, if you've been to Comic-Con, you've probably seen us there. Um, and my partner and I took over in January because um, we saw in November that the store was going to close. 
um, if there were new owners. So we decided why not. Um, and this was two months after she gave birth to our daughter. So we maybe weren't thinking completely straight, but we're very happy to be here. Yeah, well, I'm judging from the website, it looks like you, um, you've got lots of you know, author events and things going on, uh, mainly online these days. Uh, but Yeah, it was a bit of a transition. Um, I think when COVID happened, we maybe canceled two or three author events in March, but we figured out how to do the majority of them online. We started out through Zoom and then we switched over to a platform called Crowdcast. And we've been doing four or five um, author events a week. And for most of these author events, you can still get signed book plates or signed books in some cases. And it's been not only a great experience to have all of these authors participate, but um, as a consequence of being online, there have been um, kind of an uptick in conversation partners. So we've had a lot of great authors speaking to other great authors, uh, which has made for some really special events. Yeah, and no, I know that's like, I've got, you know, on a smaller scale, I've got a science fiction philosophy reading group uh, that here at uh, my university that usually meets in person. And, uh, you know, and it's frustrating that we can't meet in person now because we usually go out to dinner afterward and so forth. But the, the, uh, the plus side is that, uh, it's now it's no longer a local a reading group. We've got people from from all over. Uh, oh, that's uh, awesome. Getting involved. Um, so yeah, so uh, moving things online has both pluses and minuses. Definitely. What kind of philosophy do you guys read along the side of your science fiction? Well, uh, we don't read the philosophy. Um, we just we read we'll read some work of, of science fiction for each meeting, and then we'll talk about the philosophical issues. Um, oh, that's really cool. Um, yeah, so and you know we read everything from you know old golden age classics to the latest uh, uh, stuff you know, by you know Ted Chiang or uh, whoever. Um, uh, you know when I was uh, we haven't we haven't read anything from the Expanse yet. But when I was you know when I was in your not yet years bookstore that was like the, of the, the most recent volume of that. Um, so what were you doing before you got involved with this bookstore? Um, so my partner just finished up her PhD at UCSD, appropriately in literature. Mm -hmm. um, and I was working in a marketing department at a tech company and we're still both doing both of those things as well. Mm -hmm. So she's teaching and I, I work in the marketing department. And uh, so, uh, you know, what made you decide uh, to, you know, to buy a bookstore? Um, I, Mysterious Galaxy has been part of my life since I was a little kid. Grew up going to author events all around Southern California with my dad because he was a big fan of, you know, and McCaffrey, um, Brooks, and um, gosh, just all the the big fantasy authors of the '90s, right? And so we would, anytime they were in LA or San Diego or Orange County, we would go and take books to get signed, and I would help carry them. So we ended up in Mysterious Galaxy quite a bit, um, and then we moved down to San Diego in 2013. And it just happened to be basically across the street from our house. So it became the place that we went every, every other week and hung out and you know, kept going to author events. And we just kind of couldn't let that disappear from our lives. So we figured, why not? I mean, am I right? There's another mysterious galaxy up in Redondo Beach. Is that, is that owned by the previous owners or? What's that it? one shut down a couple of years ago. There used to be one in Redondo Beach, though. So. Okay. Uh, you know, when I'm looking online, I can always tell you know, what's current and what's not. And sometimes 
websites survive their uh, kind of ghostly survival of whatever they were the website for. Uh, yeah. Which probably means someone is paying to keep the website going. Well, sometimes the websites, you know, depends on the platforms. Sometimes it's free, and sometimes someone's paying to keep a website going for something that's not there anymore. Um, uh, so, you know, of course, it must have been exciting that right after you purchased the bookstore and the pandemic hits. Uh, Man, yeah, that was uh, unexpected. We'll say that. It was not in the business plan for this year. Um, but we, let's see, we signed all the paperwork in early December. And then we took over at the beginning of January. So between beginning of December and January 15th, we had to find a new place, sign all the contract, get everything built out and, and move. So that was December and January. And then we had February where we were open and then March. Hmm. Um, and then we've been closed to the public ever since then. So we got about six weeks of having people in the store. So you're closed for in-store browsing, but you, but you're still, you know, the website's still very much open for ordering books and other merchandise. Um, yep. And also, of course, you've got the, the author events and podcasts and various things that people can, and I'll have, I'll have links to the website in the description. Um, uh, so, you know, I mean, there seems to be, you know, there seems to be, you know, and so, I mean, at the time that, um, you know, so if people are viewing this like shortly after, you know, it'll be posted and the you know, pandemic will still be going on, but, uh, you know, for people viewing this a little bit later, uh, hopefully, uh, since there seems to be some some positive news about vaccines on the way and so on, that uh, uh, some people by the time that they're watching this, uh, they'll be able to go in your store and you know actually walk inside and look around um, the way I did. Yeah, we look forward to that. <laughs> I mean, we the place that we moved to is fifty percent bigger than the last one. Oh, cool! So a lot, a lot more room for books. A lot more room for merchandise and I think most importantly for us a lot more room for author events that was kind of the big thing you know we want to have the space to host as many people as possible safely um, for you know all the authors that people love to come and see yeah when I visited it was it was in the place uh, yeah, it was right across from like an Indian restaurant Mm -hmm. it, so that was that was the previous place um uh but now it's on it's in you know one of those places along the along rosecrans which uh you know i know that i know i know that uh that strip of of road uh, yeah, right on the corner of rosecrans and midway mm -hmm. but it's a it's a nice area i think it's going to change a lot in the upcoming years so Mm -hmm. At least they have plans to change it. And I think the voters approved it, getting some taller buildings in there. Yeah, and it's nice that you've got, you know, there's a lot of businesses around there so that we may get, you know, so that you don't just get people who are specifically looking for you, but people who are just there for something else, but sort of may, uh, you know, may uh, see you and think, oh, what's that? And go in. Exactly. It was a little tucked away in the other location. Yeah. Again, I I found it because I was specifically looking for it because I, you know, uh, I was on a conference trip and I uh, and I'd I'd finished the most recent volume of the Expanse that I had and I wanted I wanted the next one and um and so I said science fiction bookstore oh yeah there it is it's a it's a cool place to go visit we do that anytime we go to a city we're like all right where are the bookstores that is our our Kind of besides food, that is our main thing that we go look at. Yeah, well, that's I mean that's part of why we want to do this series is that uh, you know my nostalgia for San Diego. I often look at these you know travel videos and you know they're all about beaches and restaurants and I have nothing against beaches and restaurants, um, but you know there aren't any on bookstores. I thought oh that would be cool to have one and well I can't uh, I can't sort of 
physically visit uh, for multiple reasons, both with the COVID on the one hand and the fact that I'm 2,000 miles away on the other. But um, uh, I thought it'd be nice to have a, uh, uh, to uh, do some videos on some Ensign Nico bookstores and you are the first uh, to get recorded. I've got some other people lined up, but you're the, you know, well, thank you. the first one we actually got together, so. San Diego is such a great book city. You know, there's um, at, at least 11 within the county itself. Um, we always get together to do the book crawl usually in April, but it was August this year because we pushed it back. Um, but all of them are unique and they're all super nice. And, um, you know, it was a, a nice <laughs> bonus for when we moved down here. But people don't associate San Diego with you know, book culture. They think it's just, you know, just all, you know, beach stuff. And, uh, but, um, you know, having, having spent a period of time in San Diego, I have a, you know, I have a different impression of it. Um, because, you know, when I, I was a kid in San Diego in the 1970s, and of course, some of the bookstores that I remember from that time are, are long gone, but, but then there are new ones that weren't around in my time either. So you mentioned book crawl. Can you say a little bit about, more about that? Because I don't think I've heard of that. So we do um, the San Diego book crawl. That usually takes place on um, Independent Bookstore Day, which is, I can't remember which Saturday in April, but um, basically it's the whole weekend we all get together and um, usually get like a little passport book to sh prove that we've gone to each one of them and each store does something unique for it. And there's, deals and swag and you know if you go to six you'll get a special art print or if you go to eight you'll get a free tote bag um that's unique to each of the independent bookstore days so it's it's one of our favorite traditions outside of comic-con which we didn't get to go to this year um obviously i've never been to comic-con alas uh... it, it's been 10 years since I've been, and I was looking forward to getting back this year as part of Mysterious Galaxy. But um, obviously that wasn't in the cards. We're very hopeful for 2021 though. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, well, again, what I'm hearing about vaccines sounds promising, uh, but you never know. Um, but that, you know, that would be nice. Uh, I had, I have, um, I, know, I have friends who are having a you know, wedding celebration in uh, uh, in uh, Laguna Beach that just kept getting postponed and postponed and postponed, and I would really like to <laughs> attend that if possible, uh, if it you know, if it ever happens. Um, it's a nice I, place to get married. <laughs> yeah, I mean they don't live in they don't live in Riverside, but uh, they you know they've got the, they have this place reserved in Laguna Beach and they keep updating the reservation. Um, I hear conflicting things about the prospects for independent bookstores. On the one hand, I hear all well, the sort of gloom and doom that Amazon and things like that have just made it really, you know, prohibitively difficult for um, for independent bookstores. On the other hand, I've heard well, so a lot of independent bookstores are, are bouncing back. There are managing to offer, you know, like specialized services that the um, that you know Amazon and that and the other can't uh, can't easily offer. Uh, so yeah, you see, I mean, obviously, your experience is sort of weird, given given that you were you you had a normal opening month for only a month. But um, can you see a little bit about your experience on on uh, you know how you how you see sort of the prospects for you know for independent book selling. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, we have a pretty positive outlook on it because it would have been a silly investment otherwise um but i think there are a lot of people like us who value what independent bookstores bring to the community like we've talked about all the author events but we host a lot of um you know meetings of different groups um we have the writer's coffee house that meets here uh every one sunday every month or met here they'll be back um and a variety of other groups um, who use the space um, and 
you know, incorporate it, books and reading as part of their their community organizing. Um, so I, I don't think that is going to go away because that stuff is really important and people are willing to invest their time and money into spaces like this. I think that there is some evolution that independent bookstores are going to have to um, adapt to, to be a little bit more competitive with uh, Amazon because you know, it's hard once you've had the convenience to give it up, right? Um, and that's been especially clear this year where a lot of bookstores that didn't have e-commerce, you know, set it up. And now they're moving towards that. And while that might not be their main source of, you know, people ordering from them, having that as an option really broadens your horizons and helps you build out that community, right? We've seen a lot of new people learn about the store because we've been very active on social media. We've offered um, a lot of cool exclusive things through um, our e-commerce channel. And, you know, while an independent bookstore will never be able to ship as fast as Amazon, we have a lot of value that we can bring as long as you're able to kind of fulfill the um, what people want out of e-commerce, right? That sort of ease and I don't know, just especially right now, the convenience of being able to shop at home and um, know you're getting the right book. So it's kind of needs to be a marrying of the two that I think a lot of independent bookstores this year have been able to um, to tap into. Yeah, and of course, you know, the other services that you offer or that you'll be able more, more, more able to offer once the pandemic is over are, are things that you know Amazon obviously can't do, and um, and one of the being able being able to bundle, you know, being able to bundle the thing Amazon can compete with you on with something else that they can't compete with you on, so that you know when someone comes to do bookstore for the book event that Amazon can't compete with. And then while they're there, they they buy a book because it, buying a book when you're actually in the bookstore and it's right there on the shelf is even more convenient than ordering from Amazon. It really is. <laughs> um, and we miss that convenience because it does it does add a lot of <laughs> into layers. It, looking into it is really easier than you know using the look inside tool on Amazon. Uh, you get a much better feel for things by glancing inside and seeing if you want want it. Uh, and also sort of just browsing, you can. Uh, you know, you can just see something that you hadn't planned on, uh, that you hadn't been looking for, uh, and it wasn't necessarily suggested to you by Amazon's algorithm, which is actually, it's, Amazon's algorithm was pretty smart, but yeah, but still, you could recognize something that you hadn't known about, and like, oh, look, I'll go get that. I will say that it is pretty smart. The one thing that Amazon doesn't do that we do much better, and I think most independent bookstores do much better, is the amount of care that gets put into books being shipped. Because you know, Amazon packages, they're all about speed. There's probably some damage on the book or something that yeah. we would not let <laughs> go through. Yeah. You know, they wrap them in those speed boxes that you just rip open, but there's no like buffer between the box and the book. As soon as the box has already come up a little bit, um, in fact, I've, I've occasionally yeah. had boxes that were empty. <laughs> well, I've had that once, I, just once, but that was surprising. I did get something that I don't think I ordered this week that just showed up. So either I ordered it a long time ago and it only just now showed up, but I don't think I did. Well, I've, I've ordered, um, I can't remember if this was from Amazon or Barnes and Noble. I ordered some book. They sent me the wrong book. So I sent it back and asked for the right book. And they sent me the wrong book again, and over and over. So finally, I just gave up and I, uh, I ordered it just through some other means. Um, but you know, cause their customer service is, is also something where Amazon does not really compete with, uh, with an independent bookstore. There's no human who's actually, who actually knows what's going on. We've really tried to 
keep that human element, um, especially now because people are looking to buy books for other people who might not know much about books. So one of the things that we're doing this holiday and we'll probably continue doing as long as the whole pandemic thing is going on is these literary care packages. So basically you tell us um, how much you wanna spend and you tell us some things, either some books or some fandoms that you or who you're buying for like, and we work as a group with all the booksellers to come up with the right books for you at the price point that you put in. And, you know, maybe we'll throw in some, um, some merchandise or apparel or like a book pin um, as well. So that's been a really fun thing for us because we love hand selling um, and giving people recommendations of the books that we love rather than like you said, just what an algorithm tells you that you'll love. Um, that, that, that's been a really fun thing that we've added to kind of provide the convenience of shopping online with the, the independent bookseller experience. Cool. So I'm trying to think if I have anything else to ask. Nothing's coming to mind. Any, you know, any last thoughts from you? Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of ways to support independent booksellers right now. I think the easiest one that you could do is just follow people on social media or follow the stores on social media, give them likes, retweets, um, attend a virtual event. Obviously the best thing to do is to buy a book, but um, any of those other kind of online engagements that helps raise the profile of the bookstores that you love is, um, is gonna go a long way because we are fighting against the algorithms that are not necessarily tuned to the um, the wholesome and sort of day-to-day uh, -day content that a bookstore will put out, right? Facebook is very much a, a conflict generator, not a bookseller algorithm helper. Um, so we rely on the people who who love bookstores to help promote them. Yeah, well, I hope this, this video helps. I mean, I don't have a huge audience, but, uh, but uh, as I said, uh, given that there aren't many um, you know, travel videos on San Diego bookstores, I'm hoping that, uh, so that a search for, if anyone's searching for such a thing, this will bring this series up. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely gonna be a different group of people who've probably never heard of us. Um, so I really appreciate you having me on to talk about it. And I know I appreciate you coming on. So it's always nice to connect with, um, with book people and San Diego people. Yeah. And I'll but, send you some, I'll send you some new photos of the, of the new bookstore or, or some video. I'm here right now, just in the office. Thanks. I, and uh, they, they will appear in this video at some point. <laughs> yes. As I edited it. All right, well, the magic. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Uh, it's good to talk to you. It's good talking to you as well. Very well. All right. Have a good day. You too. Okay, so uh, uh, that was the first in this series of San Diego bookstores. Um, if you have suggestions for uh, what other bookstores that you think I should do or uh, to try to contact, uh, put them down in the description. Um, uh, all the information about uh, each, each bookstore that I do, relevant information about it will be likewise in the description. Um, uh, for this one, if you're considering um, uh, you know, purchasing a, a book uh, in science fiction or fantasy or mystery or whatever um, that Mysterious Galaxy might carry, you might you know, consider instead of ordering it from Amazon, you might consider ordering it from, from their website. And if, um, 
if you're in if you're in town, whether you're a local in San Diego or whether you're visiting, um, uh, consider giving the uh, uh, Mysterious Galaxy a visit, particularly after the pandemic when they'll be open to in-store browsing. Um, uh, and but in the meantime, you can uh, you can uh, um, order stuff online from them, uh, books and merchandise uh, of various kinds. Uh, you know, if you like Baby Yoda swag, or I guess it's it will it now we now have to call it Grogu swag. Uh, uh, I think they have some of that. Um, and uh, if you like the series, you'd like to see more of that, uh, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, consider supporting this channel on, uh, on Patreon or PayPal. Uh, and I will see you next time.